This past weekend, I got the chance to play Bandai's upcoming Cinderwality game, Echo of Ada, in a closed network test. So today, I want to talk about all the things I liked, the things I didn't like, and some of the improvements that, in my opinion, need to be made. Before we dive into that, though, I want to hear from you guys. So head on down to the comment section below and let me know what you thought of this game if you have played either of the two network tests that have currently taken place, or if you haven't played it yet, how excited are you to eventually play it when it does release? And while you're there, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're a fan of mecha anime content and want to see plenty more videos like this in the future. Let's kick things off with the stuff that I liked, and probably my favourite aspect of this game from what I've played so far is the stakes within the gameplay. You go in with essentially like half an hour on a battery, so that is your time limit to do all of this stuff, you have a limited amount of weight that you can carry, and also, when your Cradle Coffin gets destroyed, you lose the Cradle Coffin, you lose all of your equipment, and you lose all of the resources that you've been collecting. So it is essentially a game over scenario. So when you are playing this game, when you're going out on your salties and going and extracting these crystals, collecting resources, maybe fighting off some other Cradle Coffins, you have to be careful about how you approach certain situations. You are very aware of should I go into this combat scenario? Should I go here? Should I now, you know, retreat, return to my base and take home what I have? You have to be mindful of all that stuff. So when you're playing it, it does add that extra sense of stakes and tension where you're not just rushing in and getting killed without the worry of losing everything. You are fully thinking about every single situation you are putting yourself in, and it just makes the game way more intense, way more engaging, and just a far more like personal experience where you feel like there are things that you can lose. The game also has some pretty solid customization options where you can build up your home base over time with you know, the resources that you collect, but you can also purchase and swap out things like parts for your cradle coffin or different weaponry. So there's like solid customization in place to kind of make things your own, build things up over time. So whenever you go out on your sorties, whilst there's not necessarily missions as such, there are goals to achieve. There are things to go out and get to almost level up your player experience. And as for your Magus, who for those that haven't seen Cinderwality Noir, is essentially your AI companion. The customization there is essentially like the typical creator character type stuff where you can change the hair color, hairstyle, you can change the color of their eyes, change the position of their lips, their nose, all the kind of stuff like the, the facial character customization stuff that you usually get. And then you get things like different clothes that you can put on them and things like that. So there's solid customization in that regard for the Magus, but I guess the only thing that maybe I would improve upon is some of the customization with the Cradle Coffin. Like I said, you can swap out parts, you can, you know, swap out weapons and things like that, but there's not really the same customization in terms of like kind of creator character type stuff that you've got with the Magus. With the Cradle Coffin, you can't switch out the color scheme. You can't add things like decals or lettering or whatever you want to add on to your Cradle Coffin to make it feel that much more personal. Similar to something like Gundam Breaker, for example, where of course there, there's like limitless customization to how you can switch out Gundam parts, but also there is the idea of weathering different things and adding different colors here and there. It's these kind of options where it's a very simple addition to the game really, even if it ends up costing you like in-game currency, where it just kind of makes everything feel a bit more personal. You feel like then when you're going out on your sorties, there's truly something to lose in terms of your cradle coffin, because if you spend so much time customising it and then lose it, it's a far bigger loss than just buying a few parts and switching them out, which if you have a large amount of money in the game, you can just buy those things again. It just adds to that gameplay experience if they added a lot more customization to the Cradle Coffin. For a closed network test, I've honestly got to say that I was quite impressed by how it ran. Now, I don't think it's a consistent 60 frames and it's not going to run like a next gen type of experience. For something that is not readily available for the public just yet, it ran pretty consistently smoothly. Like I said, I don't know whether it was 60 FPS or 30 FPS, but whatever it was, it kind of sustained a level of frames per second. There were times where it did drop down, but generally, for a closed test, ran pretty well. There was no like game breaking bugs that I ran into. I know early on, like in the first few hours or whatever of the, the test, there was a bug where for some reason, like a tutorial barrier wasn't disappearing, but you can still go through it anyway. So it didn't really affect the game that much. And from my personal experience, I got kicked out of the server like one time, but then I was able to get back in. I, it didn't like kick me out of the sortie, so I didn't lose any stuff. It just dropped me back in exactly where I was before. So it really wasn't that big a deal. I didn't run into any like major bugs that really affected the experience. So thumbs up Bandai. Yeah, made something that actually runs pretty solidly. 
Here's where I get into some of the negatives though, and they're less so negatives and more so like concerns for the game in the future. First of which is that the gameplay loop, whilst it was enjoyable for the time that I played it, I worry that it will get boring quite quickly and repetitive quite quickly. You go in, you're salty, you go and collect resources, you're extracting crystals, sometimes you'll come across some enemies but there's really not a whole lot around and for the most part they're generally quite easy to defeat unless you're coming up against some of the bandits. If they overwhelm you, you're kind of screwed. And ultimately how enjoyable that game loop is going to be will largely depend on how much there is to do in the game but looking at the closed network test, if this is kind of the basis of what's available, there's not a whole lot here to be honest. I went to like a couple of different areas, there was like the northern region, there was east of Major or whatever, and they're sizable maps I guess, but at the same time they felt very empty. You come across crystals, you extract them, you will sometimes come across some bandits, you will come across enders which are like the creatures that you're taking on, but it felt like a bit of a hollow empty world, I didn't really feel like there was a whole lot in it so I'm hoping that when the full game does release that they can kind of fix up some of those things just make the world feel a bit more alive so then you when you are going round there's just more to it you know I just didn't feel like there was enough there to sustain something long term as a game. The missions as well or at least the ones that were available in the closed network test were just simply collect this collect that collect this type of resource defeat this type of enemy revive yourself or, or heal yourself this many times or activate your mega skill or something like that there were generally pretty bland missions i'm hoping that there is more to some of them in the future i'm hoping that there are actual proper missions as opposed to just like objective request collect this collect that kind of thing i'm just basically saying that i'm hoping that there's more to the gameplay more to each mission each request than what's being presented here now if there's an actual story mode which i think there is maybe there will be more substance there but as i'm playing it now it was fine for like a solid five six hours which i played it but i am thinking like going into those 20 30 plus hours uh, possibly beyond that if they want this to be you know something that has longevity to it there needs to be a lot more in this game to keep people coming back, keep people engaged, and ultimately, I guess, keep the money flowing in. It does also need a bit of facelifting within the visual department, which I kind of expect from a closed network test, but from all the trailers that I've seen, it looks decent enough, but I do notice some of the facial expressions and the general characters and that, there needs to be a little bit of work. And this is a Bandai game, they're not the most visually impressive games ever, unless we're talking like a From Software type of thing, but when it comes to these kind of anime-based games, they're not always the most amazing things uh, from a visual standpoint. So it's not my biggest issue by any means. I just kind of hope that maybe they can tweak it, fix it up just a little bit to make it maybe a bit more visually appealing than it is currently. So overall, as I expected, this game definitely needs work, but it's almost like a strong starting point. The idea of having these real stakes within the game just makes the gameplay like far more engaging and enjoyable, investing if you will, than it otherwise would be. Um, I think there's good ideas uh, in terms of what they're doing with some of the customization and that. It's just like solid basis with a lot of room to improve. That is the way that I feel about this game. I like what's on offer, but I just want more of what's on offer, if that makes sense. But those were my thoughts on the closed network test for Sin Duality Echo Evader. Before I get out there, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe. If you are a fan of Mecha Anime content, I want to see plenty more videos like this in the future. And also head on down to the comments section below. Like I said earlier, if you have played this game, let me know what you thought of it. If you haven't, are you excited to eventually get around to playing it? We'll probably get an open network test before the end of the year. I don't expect it to release in 2024 now. For those who do want to play it, I'm sure you'll get the chance to sooner rather than later. Thank you once again for tuning into Mecha Chat today. I'll see you guys next time.